All right, guys, I don't know if you guys can see this, but uh, last weekend it rained pretty good. It rained for about a solid day here, which is unusual for the desert city that I live in. But there was a long, steady rain all day. Um, I walked out here into my cargo trailer to get something. And when I opened the door, the floor inside the trailer was soaking wet. And there was water dripping from the ceiling in the trailer. So I got my ladder and I climbed up here and look what I found. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's a huge crack in this roof here, just in this panel right here. It's about a four foot wide panel and it's just a massive crack and somehow it's even missing a piece um, this stuff is like wafer paper thin so that might be something to consider when you're buying a cargo trailer you might want to actually get up and check on the roof because had I known it was going to be this thin and I mean, there's nothing between this and the other side of the, of the trailer roof uh, inside that's this supported by a couple beams every, every, I don't know, 24 inches it looks like, maybe 36 inches. Uh, there's a metal roof beam that goes across, but in between there's nothing. And this is, this is paper thin. And they've got this little strip of like, like wood laminate that goes from the, from the front to the back on the inside just to cover some wires that go across the top for the uh, the roof light, the ceiling light inside. So I'm gonna try to repair this somehow with uh, some Dicor and Eternabond and hopefully that'll patch that up, but I don't even know how that happened. Um, I know this when this thing was sitting up at the property for a month or so, it got quite a bit of snow on it, but that's ridiculous. I mean, nothing else is cracked up here. You can see where the snow had sit in different spots and kind of pushed the roof down a little bit. But that's just, that's missing metal. So just something to think about when you uh, are thinking about buying a cargo trailer. You might want to take a look at the roof. Okay, so you can't really see it, but this thing flops around in the wind. It's really a crappy roof. It's uh, very thin. I think I showed you that in the last clip. Um, the problem with this roof is right up here. Sorry guys. But they put this piece of crap little little I don't know, eighth inch thin, you know, laminated paneling or whatever the heck it is. This is supposed to be in contact with the roof at all times to keep it from flapping around. But there's nothing in between the roof and this paneling as a buffer to keep it from flopping around. So as I'm driving down the highway at 60, 70 miles per hour, you have essentially got a 60 or 70 mile per hour wind going over top of this thing. And this thing's just going crazy. Well, you keep doing this for hours and hours on end, flexing, and you end up with that crack at the center of the roof. So, maybe not a great solution, but what I'm doing is I'm basically propping this apart, and I'm filling the gap with, you know it, great stuff. I'm going to let it dry, get hard, and it'll create that buffer keep from this roof from flopping all over the place and I've done it right here I didn't do anything here because this is where I've got my little patch job going on and I haven't done anything back there yet and I'm going to show you the difference here in just a second and this stuff isn't dry it's going to take a while to dry so so what I did was I went and I bought a roll of you know, just thin, flashing sheet metal from Home Depot. 
I cut it to the length that I needed and I went up here and I slid it underneath the crack where that hole was and basically put it underneath there and I die cord the crap out of it as you can tell not a very pretty job but it'll do um, and then I had to put these weights up here just to kind of hold it down because it kept wanting to pop up it wants to flex up right now so if you can tell or I've sprayed the foam here the roof, roof has a nice, nice curve to it now as before it didn't right here just the, the weight, those couple weights on there, it's pushing it down. And the rest of the roof, as you can see, I don't know if you can see on camera, but it's not, not up like it should be. So after I spray foam the rest of the way down the roof, it should prop it up just like this. Um, this past job right here is not finished either. Tomorrow, when this is all dry, hopefully, I'll come back along here and I'll clean this up with some, um, some acetone. And then I have a roll of uh, Eternabond. I'm going to put a couple, a couple strips of Eternabond over there and roll the crap out of it with a, with a roller. And that should take care of this problem right here. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Probably not, because now I can't really see it. But I think there's another crack forming right over here at the front of the trailer. Uh, the rest of the trailer looks like it's still holding up pretty good. But I'm hoping this uh, great stuff foam is going to prevent the rest of the roof from flexing like that and cracking so um, I'm gonna do a video and this this clip right here that I'm showing you with the repair on the roof here this might be part of the video but I'm gonna do a video on my little cargo trailer here and what I've done to it the different modifications I made to it um, and I might tell you, uh, might let you know things that I do differently and, uh, and maybe what I'm going to do here in the future with this trailer. So, sorry about that. Stay tuned and uh, let me fix the rest of this roof. Okay guys, so in the last clip, which was actually last weekend, I, uh, I explained to you how I was going to fix the roof. I put a, a strip of sheet metal, um, basically this stuff right here, came out a roll, it's very thin, but it's easy to shape. Um, I put a, a strip of it underneath that crack that was up there, and then I put a bunch of decor between the roof and the strip of metal to kind of glue it together, and then I decor the crack in the roof to seal off the crack um, and then I put some weights on top just to kind of mash it all down and hold it together well when I went up and got the weights off I don't know, a couple days later after sitting in the Sun for two days it uh, that strip of metal basically got stuck to this piece of wood here and I guess bonded with the wood and not the roof so the roofing just popped back up after I took those weights off. So what I ended up doing was is I filled the rest of this gap here with uh, great stuff, spray foam. Um, I just went down to right there with that piece of metal sticking out. I didn't do that last little stretch. So far this is what I got done. But anyways. Uh, this stuff takes about eight hours to dry or to cure um, and I mean it's hard it's pretty darn hard so what it does is it actually bonds it's 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 like a glue it bonded with the wood and it bonded to the to the roofing material here so you can see what they use the manufacturer they put a little dab of whatever this stuff is it's not even it's like a gel they put a little dab of that on each corner here, there, 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 all the way down the roof. Just a little dab. And that's apparently supposed to hold the roofing material to the beams while you're driving down the highway at 60, 70 miles per hour. Um, well, it doesn't work. 
this thing ends up, you know, the wind goes over top of it and creates a, it creates kind of a ripple effect. And it just, it just gets weighty. And, uh, you know, over time that puts stress on the metal. And in fact, I, I can remember now one time I took this out camping about a year ago with my kids out to the, well, further out into the desert anyways. Um, and it happened to be really windy that night. And when we got inside, this roof, I really thought it was going to be torn off by the wind because it was, it was so turbulent. The wind was just like, I really thought this thing was going to come off. It was, it was nuts. It was, the thing was just going crazy for probably about, I don't know, two hours, I guess. Um, and that, that was probably a, a 40, 50 mile per hour wind, you know, so... When you're going down the highway at 60, sometimes 70, depending on what the speed limit is, 75. Um, you know, that thing is just putting all kinds of forces on this thin, cheap, um, in my opinion, not that great of a quality roof. So, it's, it's really funny because this trailer is built really well. All the way from the, from the ground up until you get to right here. And then they just... They went pretty much as cheap as they could. So, um, what I ended up doing was, is I went down to Home Depot and I bought, and you can buy these anywhere, but I just go to Home Depot, guys. It's where I always shopped. There's a Lowe's here. I go there occasionally, but Home Depot is just my, my place of choice. So, sometimes I go to the True Value Hardware store, um, but when they're closed, I go to Home Depot. So, this is what I got. I got a little rivet gun, which I've never done rivets before, which is odd. I... You know, in my background of, you know, uh, remodeling and construction, you think I would have used rivets at some point in time, but I never have. Um, so, my neighbor suggested using these, which was a good idea, I think. And uh, so, I got this little rivet gun and some 1 8 deep and 3 16 diameter rivets. And this is what I did. I took the acetone up there. I cleaned off the roof really well cut a strip of this about 32 inches long and I pre-drilled a bunch of holes and then I took it up here on top of the roof and I set it over the crack in the hole and I taped it into place and I started drilling holes here in the roof and what I did was um, I put a whole bunch of die core underneath this thing and then I uh, I started riveting it to the roof and basically every dot you see there is a rivet um, and then after riveting I put another bead of die core over the seam and it looks like I missed right here um, yep I missed here so um, that's really sticky. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this cure a little bit. It takes a little while to cure. I mean, even from last week till this week, this weekend, the stuff wasn't like super dry. I don't think it ever really dries out. It just it starts to firm up a little bit, but it keeps a nice uh, flexible seal over things. Anyways, I'm going to let this cure a bit and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to put strips of turnip bond on all the seams and over the whole, over the rivet area. So basically like a four inch wide strip. So a strip here, a strip on that side. Um, I might even do one down the center just to cap it off and then um, I'll do the, do the uh, actually I'll do the, bot the end first. Basically like when you're doing a flash and run window. I'll do the end first and then my strips, sides, center, and then I'll do the top piece last. Just to seal it off. And then I'll use my little roller to roll it down real nice. And apparently that turn of bond stuff, once it's bonds to the metal, it's like almost impossible to get it off. So, um, that's for right now. I think the roof itself is waterproof or waterproof water resistant um, where I made the, the patch job 
but um, I'm just going to finish it off with some Eterna Bond, and that should be it. I shouldn't have to deal with it ever again. So, all right, that's my update, and I'll, I'll catch up with you again when I finish the Eterna Bond. And I'll let you take a look at it. So, okay, guys, it's been about six or seven weeks since I first noticed the crack in the roof on my cargo trailer and that's about the time I took the first video clip was then I've been kind of busy I think the last clip I did which should be just before this one um, I showed you how I I riveted that piece of metal to the top and I think I put uh, Die core, yeah, sorry. I put some die core around the seam of it. <clears throat> and then the next thing I was gonna do was, uh, wow, I'm really drawing a blank today. <laughs> was put down some, um, Eternal Bond, sorry. Uh, I was gonna put down some Eternal Bond, roll it on, and, uh, that should do it so it's been about six or seven weeks I've been up to the property as I am here right now um, and back to my place several times I probably logged about 1300 miles in all different types of weather and this is what we have it's a little dirty from uh, you know the weather but this stuff is on here it's not coming off. It's so, it's not solid. It's actually very flexible. Um, yeah, it's a. Uh, I think it it was a successful roof patch. Um, it's not leaked since then. We've had rain. We've had snow up here since I've done this little patch job, and it hasn't leaked at all. The the apex or the crown of the roof here in the middle. I don't know if I can show you, but it stayed up just like I hoped it would when I put that uh, great, great stuff foam in there to kind of fill the gap. It's holding it up nicely. Um, I don't believe it's shaking all over the place as I'm driving down the highway at, you know, between 65 and 75 miles per hour. Um, so I think it's doing what I what I hoped it would do. Um, so uh, that's just a, a quick and uh, probably relatively inexpensive way of patching a roof. And you could you could see from the first clip that I had a huge crack and a pretty significant hole right here at the front. So <clears throat> without having to take it in and get it actually repaired by. Uh, you know, a trailer a repair shop or something like that. Um, you know, I probably spent 50 bucks on materials. Um, and if you already have a rivet gun, it'll be cheaper for you. This uh, this Eterna Bond stuff isn't cheap. I think, uh, I forget how big the roll was, 30, 30 feet, 25 feet. Anyways, it was like 35 bucks for the roll. And then the Dicor, it's not too expensive, but I've got extra left over so I can do another repair if I need to. Um, so it actually probably didn't cost me 50 bucks if you, you know, take into account for the, the stuff I have left over to do future repairs. So um, it works. I'm happy with it. And uh, if I develop any other cracks, which I think I might here at the front, I'll probably do the same thing to it. Um, it's just, it's, once you have all the materials, it's pretty quick, it's pretty easy, and it's very low cost. So, there you have it. Um, I think that'll do it for this trailer roof repair.